makes me excited, man. Because I look, I yeah. I personally don't have. This is the thing. When my ancestors came here in the 1800s, they were all farmers. Mm-hmm. They all worked with the land. They probably were farming back in Europe too, right? I imagine they probably were. I don't think they were wealthy people. They were probably pretty poor. It's probably why they came here. It's in part that because they joined the Mormon Church. But whatever, they came over here. They started farming, and then only until my generation, like me, did that stop. Did we stop working with farming and, and you know, whatever, yeah. with, with cattle and all that. Yeah. So I feel like, I, I don't want to say that I necessarily missed out on anything because I'm doing my own thing now, but the more and more I reflect on it, the more I realize how, li- how little I know and how um, ill-equipped I am in my own skill sets and my of own course. understanding. Yeah. So trying to figure out how to get there, you know, how to figure out like I want someday I would like to be able to grow my own food, man. I would like to Yeah. I would like to um not maybe not just for myself, but like in a community setting. Of course. Like we're talking about the gorilla gardener. I mean it's not just the fact that he's like, I'm gonna have everybody have their own little individual garden so they can all do their own it's like exactly. we're a community and we and can all do it. Yeah, he doesn't mind if you know the the people that are in poverty in his community come and, you know, grab some of his produce. Right. You know, right. and and he brings up, you know, such a good, you know, little example and point in his TED Talk um, where he, he talks about, um, you know, one evening he's, he's out in his yard and he catches like a, you know, a mother and, and her son, you know, trying to steal, if you will, some of his, you know, I think carrots and tomatoes, you know, some of the things in his garden. Yeah. And, you know, the mother and son that, that really don't have anything are, are kind of ashamed and, and embarrassed. Mm-hmm. But, but at the same time, what's, what's crazy in the larger picture is, is just, you know, it's astounding, it's astounding how, how disconnected we are, you know, human to human when, when food's the connection, but at the same time, like, like how food, how food is such a fundamental need and it is so yeah. difficult for, for people to even access in, in any regard, even, yeah. even if it's, you know, fast food, even if it's, you know, what, what, whatever it be, it, it's like, yeah. how, how have we gone so far, you know, away yeah. from the agrarian, you know, the agrarian lifestyle, the agrarian human that, that, I mean, number one, people don't even know where some of their food comes from. Oh, it comes from the, the shelf on the grocery store. No. Yeah. Well, it's always hard to believe when there's a poll that comes out, like how many people know where milk comes from? And they're like, oh, it's, it's a, they don't, they don't know. And yeah. I don't know how true that is because it seems so preposterous. Like, of course it comes from some animal, like it's obvious, but, yeah. but that's the level of disconnect that we're at right now. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, yeah, I talk about this sort of, it's a universal need. We all need food, mm-hmm. right? We all crave it and need it. It's important. And so, in the, and like, as you know, what they say, you are what you eat. So the quality of the food yeah. affects you on multiple levels. Like, I feel like a better, more, um, better person, not, not just, not just physically, but like psychologically and emotionally when I'm eating really well. Exactly. So imagine if a whole culture mm-hmm. is not eating well eating yeah. shit basically yeah and then shifting that culture to something that's more sustainable and and of like course. you're talking about that woman and that that, re- that uh gorilla gardener right he's a mm-hmm. woman's going to his garden his garden suppose not really his garden but the community garden yeah taking a few things feeling ashamed mm-hmm. because that's kind of the model that we've been set up and that's what we've been conditioned to think but if if everybody feels like they're a part of the food system and is directly connected to it then everybody's going to feel nourished by that in more ways than one. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and, great point. And that, um, and that food is really just a vehicle for human connection. Because, oh, yeah. again, you know, if everybody's a part of that system, then everybody feels a part of a community. And what could that create? You know, what would come out of that? Yeah. And I think that it's almost, um, I want to say it's a conspiracy by any means, like a <laughs> planned conspiracy. Like everybody's like, there's like a cabal of, you know, men in a room somewhere. But I do think that there's been this mutual interest among certain groups of people to maintain this illusion of separation among the masses, as it were, the masses. Yeah. And that what you're doing is 
And what other others are doing is is trying to reforge those connections that have always been there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, of course. And, and facilitating human connection as a result.